Hi and welcome to WEH videos. My name is Skip and this is part three on how to create your own control panel or instrument panel for your X-Plane simulator. Now last time we learned how to identify the wire combinations we need and now we're going to determine how to lay out the wiring in the back and wire up all our components. So let's get started. Alright, before we take a look at my new circuit board, I want to show you some of the problems I came across with my old one. In my haste, I made some mistakes. So how do we mount the board to the table? My plan was to use a block of wood and put that right there. And then I was going to mount my circuit board right here with the wires coming up this way going to my components. So it would look like this. Now you notice, of course, I have a row for switches down here. Obviously, way too low. Number one, I can't even get my finger under them. Number two, they're going to go into the block of wood that I'm using to mount the panel with. So your first row of components needs to be high enough that they can be installed above that board in the back. The other problem with mounting is where you place your different components. Now, the switches are stiff and they take a little effort and they work fine when they're mounted low near the mounting point. But when you get up here, you end up with a little slop. It rocks back and forth a little bit. Now, the push buttons work pretty well up there. So mounting is something you want to think about, especially if you're going to have switches up on top so my thought was I'm going to use a mount that's higher. So I end up with more support up here because the top of my mounting bracket is going to be right up here on top. So when I push the buttons, it'll be a lot firmer. So those are just a couple of things you want to consider before you even start placing your components. How are you going to mount this on your table or whatever? And where is your first row of components going to be? So here's my new instrument panel I'm working on. And as you can see, I used the quarter inch graph paper to lay out my components. So let's zoom in on this and take a closer look. So my panel is based on a Cessna 172, which I fly most of the time. So that's what I want on my simulator. So here again on the graph paper I have laid out all my components. These five buttons here are COM1, this will be NAV1, these five will be COM2 and NAV2, the transponder, and then down here I will have momentary switches, not buttons, for the lights. And then some other components here as well. Now remember I said what we're going to do is we're going to lay out our components, then we're going to take our our nail or punch and a hammer and put it right on the cross marks there where I had circled and I'm going to give it a tap. Now I have done that already and what I end up with is a whole lot of little holes on the front part of the panel and this is where I am going to drill my holes. Now if your panel is wood like mine is then you want to make sure you have a brad tip drill, not a regular drill. You'll tear up the wood here. And the same thing on the bottom of this. You need to put a piece of wood underneath the panel. And when you drill through it, make sure that you're holding the panel firm against that wood. So when you go out the back of your panel, it won't tear up the back side. Now this is pretty important. You don't want to go all this way and then find yourself tearing up the face of your panel. So that's all there is here. I'm going to take this off now and I'm going to go drill all these holes. And when I come back this panel will be populated with all the buttons and switches and we'll flip it over and we'll go through the soldering process. 
All right, I've got most of my buttons and switches installed on my panel, and I've got good news and bad news. The good news is my overall panel, the size and shape, I think is going to work just fine, and looks like the way I want to mount it with this one piece of wood here to keep it firm on top is going to work really well. But I did run into some problems assembling this. First off, the holes I drilled here are a little too big. The problem came around with, on the button switches, the threads here, they're a quarter inch of diameter. When I drilled a quarter inch hole here, I couldn't get this guy to go through there. I pushed and shoved and twisted, tried to screw it in, it went in sideways and stuff. It just didn't work. So I went to the next size up drill bit, which I had, which was a 3 16 And the problem is, that's just a little bit sloppy. Now it's not really a big deal, but it moves a little bit, so the buttons don't line up really well. So that's just one minor detail. A larger problem is the panel itself is 3 16 of an inch thick, and unfortunately the threads here for the button are just a little bit over 3 16 of an inch. So it's difficult to get the nut started on here. Now, it, it can be done, but it takes a bit of work. The other thing is, these nuts that come with the switches, they're flat on one side in most cases. So if you can't get a bite when you're trying to put this on, flip that nut around and you should be able to get it on there. I was able to do it, but it was a bit of an effort. What I ended up doing was getting my belt sander out and I just laid the panel down and on the back side of the panel I just sanded off a bunch of material so I could get this through there and then it worked with no problem. The other problem I came across is when I was laying this out on the paper I didn't take an account for the nuts so I wanted to put labeling in between this row here and up here but I didn't space them far enough apart. So if I really want to do this, I'm probably going to do it over and get some more spacing so I can get some nice labeling in here for all my instruments. And that's about it for the problems and how it went. And I think now it's time to flip this guy over and do some soldering. First off, we need to have our layout paper that we use to place the components. And what we want to do is flip this over, like so. And of course you want the whole panel for all your components, but I'm just going to work on this portion for this video. Now I suggest scanning this, taking a picture of it, or do whatever you can for this, because we are going to write wire numbers on this. The other thing we're going to need, of course, is our wire combinations. So this is a picture of my layout paper. Now don't worry if you don't have your paper and you couldn't do this. Just take a picture of the back of your panel and then use that. It'll work just fine. But here's the back of my panel. This is the right side. My mounting block is over here and the circuit board will be mounted on that so the wires will come this way. Now all we have to do is figure out what wires go where. So let's look at our sheet. Here's wire number 27, and you can see all the combinations here. Now these are the outputs. The wire numbers are over here. So it looks like for wire 27, I can use wire 2, 4, 5, 6, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So what I've already done here is, as you can see on my picture, is I've written 27. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. Now I have 12 combinations, right? And I can use 2 and 4. So remember, this lower row is going to be the rocker switches. So 27 will go to the center post, and I'll solder wire number 2 to the top post, and number 4 to the bottom post. And then we continue on. So the next one would be 5 and 6. So we'll solder 5 and 6. And then 11 and 12. And 13 and 14. 15 and 16. And 17 and 18. 
So I'm using up all of that wire combination there. So this is great. I'm going to take one wire and run it through the center of this toggle switch here all the way across. And that'll take care of that. Then I just need to take these wires and solder them to the appropriate terminals that I've marked here. So what's next? Next we have wire number 26. And it has 14 characters. If we look at my sheet here, number 26, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we have 14 characters there, and they are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. So now I'm going to write those corresponding numbers here. So let me go ahead and write those numbers down, and we'll be right back. All right, as you can see, I have wires 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on, the 14 combinations here for wire 26. So on this momentary button, there are two terminals, and I'm going to put wire 26 and wire 2 there. Now we're going to be using these wires again, and I'm going to show you later how to jump from one to the other, and hopefully working up this way will make it pretty simple. So the next wire is wire 25, and let's take a look at that one. You know what, instead of going through all these wires, I think you have the idea. So I've gone ahead and found all the combinations for all my components. So a quick review here. This bottom row is going to be a momentary switch. So what we're going to do is solder the center terminal to uh, wire 27 for each one of these switches. So this is going to be one wire going to all these components. And then the same thing with wire 26. We have two lugs on this to connect. So one lug is going to go to wire 26. And every one of these is one of these push buttons. So we're going to jump 26 across each one of these until we use up all of wire 26. Then we're going to go to 25 and do the same thing. Again, they're momentary switches. We will jump 25 to each one of these components. So this is pretty simple and you can see now I have all the wires I want to use. So now we need to work the other way from wire 1 to 19. So as we look at my chart here, we see that on wire 27, we used wire 2. Wire 2 we used in two places, on 26 and 27. So now let's go locate wire number 22. Now we know it's on 27 right here. So we're going to bring our wire off of the circuit board over to this first three-way switch and we're going to solder wire number two to one of these lugs. It can be the bottom or the top. It makes no difference. We just need to solder the wire to number two. And then we said we had a wire that went to number 26. So up here we have 26 on two on this momentary switch. So now we're going to jumper a wire from here to the other terminal on this momentary switch. And that'll take care of everything for wire number two. So now we do the same thing for wire number three. And let's look at wire number three. We used it on 26, 24, 23, and 22. So where's wire number three and 26? We got three and 26. This is here. 3 and 24 is down here. I missed these two last time, so I just dropped a couple of wires on it, so it's there. So we need to go from 3, pardon me, we need to go from 26 to 24, and up here to 23. And the 22 is off on the other side. So now this is where you can get fancy if you want. This is all wire number 26 that these other wires are connected to. So we can take this 6 and move it over here and take this three and move it over here. Now we have a short jumper from three to three, right? So now we're going to come off our come off our circuit board and we'll come over here and pick up this three. So we're going to have our wires coming up this way from the circuit board. Same thing over here, 
from the circuit board to number three or number two and then we're on three and from 26 we go to three so now we have another jumper to make up here to 23 and that takes care of wire number three all right so now let's take a look at wire number four and this is going to be the last one you'll get the idea here so we used wire four on 27 26 24 22 and 21. Now I only have these three on this form, so let's just find them. 4 and 27. So here's 4 and 27. So we're going to bring wire number 4 off the circuit board to 4. And 4 and 24. Remember I moved 24 over here, so we can take another wire and jump her from here. And we can come around over here to 4 and 24 on this momentary switch. So that's 4 and 24, 4 and 26, and here's 4 and 26. So we can come off of 4 and 24 and go over here to 26. All right, so that's all I'm going to show you here. Obviously, this is going to get messy. And what I plan to do is go through this once and then see where I can shorten things up, maybe be, bring 26 over here, or move these lower numbers around. So as you're doing this, look for ways to shorten up your jumps. For instance, we could take wire number 4 off of 27 and swap it with 18. So this could be 4, and this could be 18 on number 27. And now in number 4 off your circuit board can come over here and go here and now we have just a short jump from here to here and from here to here so this is obviously going to take some work and I think we can get that fairly clean however it's going to be like I said the spider's web back here all right this may be a little confusing the way I've been talking but I'm just showing the wire layout here not the actual soldering process for instance I said we're gonna go from 24 to 26 and from 27 to 26 I'm referring to the component so this component say right here is a button switch and it already has wire 24 soldered to one of the lugs and this component has one lug with the wire 26 solder to it. So when I say we're going to take wire number 3 and go from 24 to 26, I'm referring to this component and this component and the open lug that we can solder a wire to. Obviously we don't want to go from 24 to 26. That would tie it in with all these other switches. And this will all make sense when we get down to doing the soldering and that'll be in part 4. So that's it for part three. If I've confused you anywhere along the line, please leave a comment or send me a message and I'll take care of it if I can. Next time we're going to get into the actual soldering. So in part four, we're going to get down to the fun work. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please click the like button. If you'd like to leave a comment or send me a message, that'd be great. Thank you so much for watching and God bless.